And I'd like to move on and introduce Marie-Claude Sirois. She is the director of the Directorate of Evaluation and Support for the Improvement of Intervention Methods in Social Services and Mental Health at INES in Canada. Uh, she is also a board member of INSEA. Thank you, Sophie. I press here, I yes. guess. Yes, or you can use this. Okay. Which it's good want. with... Uh, Thank you so much. I'm really, really happy to be here today. It's uh, really a honor. Uh, be indulgent with me. I'm a bit rusty in English. I don't talk it often, so maybe I'm, I'm going to make some mistake here and there and make you laugh, which is a good thing. <laughs> um, my topic is not about all the methodology of Ines, uh, but I think it's going to be interesting with uh, what uh, Rigmore just told us, because um, I'm going to talk about collaboration with users and caregivers. And before being in my topic, uh, I'm going to talk briefly about Ines. So it's an ultra rapid overview. Uh, we're constituted by a law, the law of Ines. And that act uh, specifies our mandate and our type of collaboration also with the government. Uh, it's a bit small, maybe, but you see here different aspects of what we do. We assess the clinical advantage and cost of different technology, medication, of course, and social services. We produce recommendation and clinical practice guides. We determine service performance evaluation, and we also uh, Propose implementation mechanism. We keep the recommendation and practice guide up to date, or we always trying to do so. It's not always up to date. It's a challenge. We foster the implementation of recommendation and the uh, knowledge transfer for different kind of, and we produce outreach tools also. The directorate that um, we have for social services include also re rehabilitation and mental health. And we uh, have a lot of different uh, people from different backgrounds. So people from criminology, social work, psychology, epidemiology, uh, public health. So it's uh, quite interesting. And we serve the Ministry of Health and Social Services. When I'm saying we serve them, we're uh, by law, we're independent for all our work. So we do, that's important to work with commissioner, but not to be too much implicated with uh, possibly the conflict of interest or uh, some pressure for the government, from the government or everything. So the independency of uh, our scientific uh, methodology is really important also. And of course, institution, clinician, professional, sometimes our guidance is for the government and sometimes we have more practical guidance for the clinician themselves. Okay. In INES, uh, as many of your organization, we use science, literature, and we also use stakeholders knowledge. So the experiential knowledge and contextual knowledge are all integrated in the science of the literature, the review the, the, as you were talking. So it's not research we're doing, it's evaluation. And that's why we integrate all those knowledge together in order for the guidance to consider all those aspects beforehand. And of course, we're doing a lot of consultation with caregivers and with people who have the condition themselves. At one point, we thought that maybe we can innovate and do something even more than consultation. And that's my topic today. So the vision was to implement a regular and permanent process of user engagement so that user becomes central actors throughout all the process of the production 
of the and um, we know for sure that the effectiveness of intervention is really linked to the user experience, especially in social services. And also in mental health, we can see that the person, how he feels about the intervention, what he, he gains from it, how he, he also provide in the relationship with the social worker, for instance, is so important. Their point of view are essential for the acceptability and applicability of what we provide as guidance. Uh, the panel itself doesn't replace other consultative things that we have because we have users in advisory committee as key informers in different ways and basic focus group consultation. But the panel itself brings something more and it's a little bit hard to explain because we're into it right now and we're trying to learn from it. But I'm going to try. So as uh, Rigmore also presented, there's different ways and I'm not going to go through all that, but from consultation, collaboration, co-construction, and we have ad deliberation. I'm not talking about that today, but there's a coffee break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, to start the difference between consultation and the panel, it is... Um, the consultation, of course, it's on a specific topic, a specific condition, but the panel themselves, they are on all the topics. So it's more what the person uh, have experienced within the system, whatsoever is the situation that uh, brought him to the system to begin with. When we uh, try to implement the panel itself, uh, we wanted to co-construct with panelists. We didn't want to have all the recipe by ourselves. We wanted to, to make it, um, this, the value of collaboration was also in the, in the preparation of the panel itself. So the people, the, the first people that started to think with us, they thought of the mandate and they thought of the composition and the different procedure of operation for the panel. So they're always with us with the thinking of, uh, of this group. So the panel, uh, as I was saying, is permanent and it provides input on the teamwork in all the different phases. And uh, what is interesting also, they discuss emerging concern with professional and uh, with uh, the managers and the, the stakeholders. Um, for recruiting those person, because it's important that those person have been through the services and not only like all of us, maybe just normal services, but the second line services we're calling in Quebec, which is um, when uh, you need more uh, psychiatry, rehabilitation. Uh, so the, the people themselves, they've been through uh, those kind of uh, level of services and they have perspective <laughs> on their situation. They're not too much into it emotionally. Uh, they, they gather knowledge and they have a distance emotionally from their... Um, experience. So they're more able to discuss about it. And uh, they, so they have that possibility of having a broader view on the system and on different condition. The panel itself, uh, right now we have three female and three male. They are between 25 and 65 years old, and they have different area of expertise, as you can say. Uh, even a person who was homelessness for many, many years, people with mental health issues, uh, caregivers for uh, people uh, with uh, different disabilities, parents of young person with uh, spectrum disorder. The working method, well, we have four to five annual meetings, but if we need them or on a specific topic, we can have another meeting in between. Um, 
At the beginning, when we started, we wanted for it to be really relevant for the panelists because we didn't want to have them. It was not in our values to have them because it's quite of in the trend right now to have users and caregivers in research. And in Canada, uh, when you want to apply for foundation for research, you have to have a user, which is maybe tricky sometimes because you want to make sure they're not used. <laughs> But they, they really feel good when they're coming to Ines and they feel that they're giving something and they feel uh, happy about themselves and, and that it's relevant also for the scientists because I didn't want them to be forced to come to the panel without having the sense that it makes a difference in their work because it's they have already a lot of work and they have a lot of consultation to do and a lot of advisory committee to prepare themselves. So I didn't want the panel to be an add up on top of that. So it had to be relevant for the professional themselves. I've put some of the topic that uh, were presented to them and not only presented that they discuss with us upon all these topic at various Uh, phases. So sometimes it's where we prepare the, the not the cadrage. How, how we say that, Annie? The formal, when we prepare how we're going to do the, re the, the, the work, the methodology. So we consult them at that moment. We consult them when we want to consult. And we sometimes, they help us to make sure that the approach that we have for the consultation is respectful and also a vulgarization of our scientific words. So uh, they help us at that time too. But they also sometimes bring us to different perspectives that we never considered, even though we're really sensitive about them, the users, they're the reason why we're working. But sometimes they surprise us <laughs> with things that we'd never thought. So you can see it's very... See, there's a lot of variety and there's many, many more uh, subjects that they had the chance to help us with. Um, how am I with time, Ms. Sophie? Four, Four minutes, minutes left? left? That's perfect. I can have a drink also. <laughs> um, something really important also in the value of Ines is to constantly improve what we're doing, our methodology, our way, our way of working. So we wanted um, to improve the panel. It's, it was already interesting and already relevant for us, but we wanted to have a perspective from a researcher because we're too involved and we like it. So I think we had a conflict of interest ourselves. So we, uh, we had the chance to have Marie-Pascal Pomey, which is a researcher and a well-known person in a patient relationship. She uh, co-chair um, CEPPP, which is an uh, excellency center for patient and um, caregiver uh, participation in the University of Montreal. So she was kind enough to uh, do the research with us. We wanted to assess the panel of user and family caregiver because we um, wanted to make sure that it was uh, the best way we can use the situation. And uh, we wanted to, uh, to also learn from the experience and try to improve ourselves. She did a qualitative case study And she had a lot of interviews with a uh, lot of her batim. She's, she, she said she worked very, very hard because people are very talkative and very passionate about their experience. She analyzed uh, all that and she's going to produce um, an article pretty soon about it. So there's something that I can uh, tell you today, but other things that are going to be in her article. And um, we also... Uh, are consequent with the, the basis of the value. So it's also a research action. And throughout the research, she's giving us results in order for us to already uh, use the results. 
So she did 21 interview, 19 participants from the, there's people from the panel, from employees. It was voluntary, of course. And uh, she uh, had at least 50 minutes of interview per person. Um, these are three verbatims. And as I was saying, I cannot say all the, the results right now because she haven't finished to analyze them all. Uh, but what I can say from now is for professional, they really learn to better and identify the level of questioning and the aspect to bring to the panel to make it as relevant as possible. Because there's different ways to approach different committees with different material. So we had to really think of what is the best angle, what are the best questions, how to use them better. And we've learned throughout the years how to do so. And uh, there's, it's not a, a science and there's not much documentation about that. But uh, from the experience, it's uh, important for the professional. And now they want to come to the panel and they all come in and have the problem of trying to decide who's going to the panel. At first, they were not that hot about it, but now they, they, it's, uh, it's uh, inside of their values also as scientists. Um, and the professional, you see, are sometimes surprised by just how much the panel help uh, us better understand the issue in question and also how much they are is essential in the process. Finally, for the panel members, um, some of them, they were reluctant at the beginning because they thought, my God, I have an experience of let's say, uh, physical deficiency or for spectrum disorder and don't know nothing about mental health. So they were afraid to not contribute or not knowing what to say, but they learned together and they got a confidence together and they trust each other and more and more they got exposed to our work and the, the questioning we have and more they feel comfortable and they can express themselves as human being in the system, receiving services, whatever is the condition. And that was such a bet for us at the beginning because we were unsure that it was interesting or relevant for them to have different kind of topic, but they really enjoy it and they feel really more uh, contributive to it. So um, finally, I'll let you on that uh, verbatim. Uh, we're, and I'm going to read it, this one. We're human beings with hands-on experience with healthcare system and social services. That's why we're comfortable and interested in being able to use our own experience in a more general way to bring the process to a more general level and share concern we have as users and close family and friend that can benefit everyone. Thank you. <laughs>